I'm legit sad about this. Schmigadoon season three is kaput. Hello darlings and welcome to Performance Perspective where we watch different performances and then we share our perspectives. If you're new here, hi, I'm Care Darling. Oh man, I messed up the beginning, didn't I? Oh well. So anyways, listen, I know usually I'm on camera and things like that, but for some reason I keep getting anxiety or I keep getting the sense of, oh my gosh, I have to set up the camera. I gotta do my makeup. I gotta, you know, have the microphone all set up and I'm making things way harder than it has to be for myself. So in the meantime, I am just going to have a voiceover, talk it out because listen, your musical bestie here needs help, especially after hearing these news. Now, listen, if you are someone that enjoys musicals and performances and the theater world, I am your girl. Don't forget to like and subscribe because this year my goal is to hit 5,000 subscribers. And the thing is, is that I'm not going to hit those subscribers when I'm not putting up any content. So shame on me, but let's get into it. So. Schmigadoon, after two seasons on Apple TV Plus, has been canceled, as announced by co-creator Cinco Paul on Instagram. Despite a written season three with 25 new songs, it won't be produced. I'm sad to share that Apple will not be moving forward with season three of Schmigadoon. The season is written, including 25 new songs, but we unfortunately won't be making it. Such is life. I want to thank everyone involved with the show, our incredible cast and crew and writers, our wonderful supporters at Broadway Video, Universal, and Apple for everything they did to make it happen. It's a miracle we even got two seasons, honestly, and I'm so grateful we did. And to all the fans of the show out there, thank you with all of my heart. Your love and support has meant so much. And the fact you connected with our show, that it brought you some joy, means the world to me. This was tough news to get, but the optimist in me is convinced that it's not the end of Schmigadoon. And maybe it's even a happy beginning. Love, Cinco. It's puzzling, right? Schmigadoon gets axed despite having a fully written season three with new songs and ready to go. It reminds me of Pink Ladies on Paramount+. Plus. They released a full season and then out of the blue, Paramount just scrapped it along with other shows, wiping them from their platform. So people couldn't even finish the season because it was gone in less than two weeks from its season finale. What's going on with these decisions? Let's break down this cancellation chaos. I'm sharing my take and I'd love to hear yours too because we need to address why top-notch musical shows are getting tossed aside. It's a tough break for our musical theater community. Not everyone enjoys musicals, which is fine, but when a quality show with a strong musical theater essence gets cut, it reinforces the stereotype that musical theater is cringeworthy rather than a medium that deeply connects us with stories and characters through song. Just like how people like to quote lines from beloved shows and movies, like, well, I'm trying to think of some quotes, like, I'll be back, or how someone will say, here's Johnny, things like that. People just connect, but the musical fans can sing it and all that jazz. Cutting straight to the chase, it's not about the content or the audience. It's about money. Remember the pre-streaming days? Okay, so shows had set schedules punctuated by commercial breaks. Viewership numbers drove the revenue. High viewership meant more companies vying to put their ads in popular show slots. This lot not only covered everyone's paycheck, but also allowed for royalties, meaning that even if the show wasn't producing any more content, but doing reruns on the channel, people were still being compensated for that work. Now with the streaming services, the whole game changed. Take Netflix, for instance. It started off as a DVD service where you select a movie, they mail you the DVD, and you send it back to get the next one all under a single monthly subscription. This model was a game changer, especially for those who used to rent movies weekly from places like Blockbuster. With Netflix, multiple movies became accessible with just one payment, leading to a massive shift in consumer habits. As a result, traditional rental stores like Blockbuster saw their business dwindle and eventually closed down. 
Netflix revolutionized TV and cable in a way we never saw coming. They introduced a system where we could stream any TV show or movie directly on our TVs. No DVD player, no need to leave the house, and it wasn't long before Netflix took a step further realizing they could produce their own shows, challenging the entertainment landscape even more. You might be thinking, wait, weren't we discussing musical show cancellations? Absolutely we are. This background on the evolution of streaming services is my way of laying the groundwork for understanding the root of the problem with these abrupt cancellations. Stick with me here, <laughs> it'll, it'll all connect. Let's fast forward to July 14th, 2023, when a significant event shook the industry. SAG-AFTRA teamed up with the Writers Guild for a strike. This was a direct response to the shifting landscape in entertainment due to streaming, receiving fair payment job security, and that AI is used as a tool to copy other artists' work. The writers wrapped up their strike by September, but SAG's strike stretched until November 9th, 2023. And remember how we started with Netflix? Here's a fun challenge. Guess how many streaming services are out there now? Drop your guesses in the comments and let's see who gets close. Okay, ready? As of 2023, the number of video streaming services businesses in the US soared to 239. That's a whopping 17.4% increase from 2022. The streaming world is expanding rapidly. You know, even sitting here thinking about it, I have Hulu, Disney, Netflix, Prime. Like think about how many streaming services you have currently and how much that is monthly. Moving on, royalties have become less common with many streaming services as they don't rely on traditional time slots and commercial viewership. Instead, their revenue hinges on subscriber numbers, not sponsorships. Product placement in their original movies might be a form of sponsorship, but this doesn't consistently cover costs like paying writers, actors, and other talent. If a streaming service owns the content or has paid for a show streaming rights, their contracts often don't include royalties, as this terrain of streaming is still evolving in terms of their marquee series is a, a clear indication of where the priorities lie, potentially sidelining niche genres like musicals. So why do I feel like musical shows might struggle to find long-term success? Let's take Netflix as an example because I have been so far. Producing a TV show is an expensive venture for them. They routinely spend over $10 million on their flagship series per episode, outspending most other studios, with Netflix still dominating the streaming industry. This high budget approach for their marquee series is a clear indication of where their priorities lie, potentially sidelining niche genres like musicals. The streaming strategy often aims for low budget productions that yield high returns. However, musicals are inherently costly. For instance, most Broadway shows run up to a tab of between $300,000 and $600,000 a week primarily due to expenses like advertising and theater rental. This high cost structure makes musicals a challenging fit for the streaming model. Grease, Rise of the Pink Ladies, a TV musical prequel to the classic 1978 film Grease, premiered on Paramount Plus in April, exploring themes like racism, sexuality, and gender with a diverse cast. Despite its impressive costuming, staging, and original songs, the show received mixed reviews, juggling elaborate musical numbers with compelling storytelling to attract and maintain viewer interest is a tough act. This intricate balance might have contributed to its potential cancellation by Paramount Plus. Hear me out though. Could Paramount Plus's removal of Rise of the Pink Ladies from its streaming catalog be a tax strategy? Variety and Deadline highlighted Disney's 1.5 billion content write down from its streaming service. Disney and Hulu removed dozens of series during a content review expecting to record a $1.5 billion impairment charge as per an SEC filing. 
In simpler terms, companies like Disney, Paramount+, Plus, Hulu, and Warner Brothers might financially benefit from removing shows from their catalogs. A write-down can lead to a tax write-off, reducing tax liability. Annabelle Oaks, creator of The Rise of the Pink Ladies, shared her dismay on Instagram about the show cancellation and removal from Paramount+. Plus. Oaks lamented, the cast, my creative partners, and I are devastated at the complete erasure of our show. While social media backlash or other studios may rescue some shows, the fate of Rise of the Pink Ladies has been uncertain. Fans like me are left hoping for its revival on any platform. It's disappointing to see that what's happening with Schmigadoon mirrors the situation of Pink Ladies. Despite having a dedicated audience that adores the show, studios, or more accurately, streaming services, don't view musicals as financially viable. They've crafted a system that depends on subscription revenue, then on external companies investing in shows for advertising opportunities. So there you have it, my take on why Schmigadoon was canceled. Old. If you got a theory or just want to vent about how frustrating it is not knowing what season three had in store, don't hold back. I mean, I was betting that uh, Patty Lapone would make an appearance in a future season, but now who knows? But like, certainly not me. In conclusion, this sucks. <laughs> Like I said, I would love to know your perspective. And if you enjoy these kind of videos, don't forget to like, because my goal this year is to hit 5,000 subscribers. So have a great day. And I mean, with without further ado, take care, darling.